Hi, welcome back to You Think. I'm Jay Ross, your moderator, and today we're doing a rather special show. We have with us people who are well known in show business. I want to introduce my panel tonight. And uh, first of all, I want to start out with Johnny Frigo, a uh, Chicago treasure and uh, somebody who uh, most of you know has been, uh, been in and around the Chicago area as well as the rest of the country. He's a recording artist. And the world. And the world, exactly. Last year, I. Go ahead. I, last year, I, on my vacation, I went all around the world. Uh, this year, I think I'm going to go someplace else, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you got a new CD out that you got right there. Which so happens, yeah. This this right, is uh, this is I, at three years old. Okay, here let's get it closer to the camera there, someplace. <laughs> I think I think there we go. I think I have more hair uh, than than I did now, but other than that, there we go. And these are this is in the stores, right? No, it isn't. Oh, it's not. No, it's too new. Renaissance man. Right. It's okay. too new. All right, and you also brought some artwork with you, you said? Well, I, have, I swear, I had it reframed, uh -huh. and I was on my way in it, so I brought it with me. All right. You don't want to see that, do you? You don't want to see that one? All sure. right. We can show it later. We can show it now, whatever you want. Whatever. All right. And um, we'll go more into, we want to talk to you more about your career, et cetera. And then next, we have royalty with us. And by that I mean we have the man whose song from Chicago is probably the most popular song ever to come out of our city. I'm talking none other than the Duke, Gene, the Duke of Earl Chandler. Gene, thanks so much for showing up. My pleasure. Us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you, um, you got, you want to plug something or anything like that that we got to no. share? No, the no. Duke, he, the Duke is plugging up. He stands on his laurels. <laughs> All right, going, chronologically going, we've got now Somebody who just is back this week from doing the Martin Short show in uh, Los Angeles, which hasn't even aired yet, but it will probably have aired by the time the show goes on. And he is uh, not only Chicago, but probably this country's best young Frank Sinatra impersonator, Dakota, ladies and gentlemen. Dakota, you want to tell us anything else about what you've been doing? I've been doing a lot of stuff. Uh, I'm going to Florida next week to do some stuff out there in Miami. I'm uh, be doing some uh, some upcoming TV appearances, which I'm not even sure of yet. But I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff uh, in the near future. Keep them busy. Yeah. All right, and last but certainly not least, uh, uh, the star of the UPN Network show, Guys Like Us, a singer and a lecturer and uh, somebody who can really inspire people, ladies and gentlemen, Maestro. Maestro. How are you, Maestro? Hello. I hear you just did a, talk, a radio show today. Not a radio show, a TV show. TV show. Okay. Well, we know you did Leno and Maury and quite a bit. You're still, yeah. but you spend a lot of time in yeah, Chicago. Working. <laughs> yes, Keep on working, huh? <laughs> All right, well, what I want to do, the reason that I have this assemblage of people together is that I, would, I thought that we would uh, talk uh, to the uh, established artists here on the panel Maybe they could give some advice to these young kids starting out and, you know, already making a, a name for themselves in the industry. Maybe they could tell us a little bit about the uh, life on the road, the good times, the bad times, some of the mistakes they may have made. Let the kids ask some questions, uh, get into some other areas and talk in general. But I think that it, in all fairness, we should talk a little bit more in detail about your individual careers. And so let's start out with Johnny. Johnny, I know you were uh, on radio for quite a, a while in a show, uh, Barn Dance, wasn't that it? Oh, yes, and other things before that, but I was on the Barn Dance. Uh, mainly I went on to get my violin chops together again because I was playing bass primarily for uh, 40 years before that. Wow. And I had the violin on the back burner all those years, and I decided to come back to Chicago to start a career. And because I was in the studios playing uh, bass on commercials, uh -huh. I, I, I sort of ignored 30 years of, uh, 35, 40 years of my violin playing. So I took a, a job on the barn dance on Saturday nights. And for those of the people in the audience who don't know, that was a national show that yes, emanated it was like from the grand, Chicago? it was like the Chicago version of the Grand Ole Opry. Exactly, exactly. And uh, I got more practice on those four hours that we were on the air live Four hours live. Yeah, wow, eight to midnight true. or eight thirty. I take it back. Eight thirty to midnight. Wow. Uh, live. 
And well, we had a play for every uh, entertainer that came from Nashville. And I had a group called uh, the Sage Riders. Uh, what was the what was the it like to be on on a regular basis? Was it weekly or was it daily or was it? Well, I got paid to be on the staff weekly. And then I found out I was doing so many other things that I was going to quit because I didn't want to be at WLS the rest of the days. And uh, I guess they wanted me badly enough that they paid me my weekly salary just to be on Saturday nights. I see. So so I put a different hat on on Saturday nights, and the rest of the time I was just a studio bass player and a jazz player. That's But that's how I got my chops together on violin. That's interesting. So uh, was that a hectic pace to it be on It was because a radio show? Uh, they would, uh, like for instance, Johnny Cash or uh, Loretta Lynn, or all those people would come on, and they, a lot of them wouldn't know their keys, you know. They'd just start singing in the back room, you know, and they'd go like, uh, you're cheating hard. And we'd follow that key. So we'd say, okay, that's in a key of B, B flat or something. But then when, when we got out on the stage, I'd never played in that key because I knew they'd have to sing it much higher when they performed. You understand? So I tell the guys, raise it up a third. We'll do it in uh, G instead. <laughs> you so when I you played had the to psych them out. You so. had to psych them wow. out. That's exactly well, right. Well, let, let, me, let me interrupt you for one second and ask Maestro a question. Maestro, you're the only one on the panel who's been on a regular TV show. <laughs> I understand that's really a hectic pace with having to learn the lines and be there and... You know, tell us a little bit about that. Is that the same thing that he was talking about? Well, pretty much it's the same thing, but I had to set my goals and decide which things I wanted to achieve, and I decided I wanted to learn the scripts. Did you just learn your own lines, or were you one of those guys that learned, knew everybody's lines? I learned everybody's lines. <laughs> <laughs> so, Somehow so I figured they couldn't come, I was there. Uh -huh. Back them up. I back up you. for the back up. <laughs> I got you. All right, well, back to you, Johnny. I want to just get Maestro in there for that. Uh, you know, you, you're a songwriter. I know Detour Ahead is one of your big numbers, etc., yeah. which is still it's popular. I, I, I wrote it. I wrote the words and music in 1947. And since the Winter Olympics, at first it was only Billy Holiday, uh, Sarah Vaughan, and uh, I forgot the piano player's name. Uh, that, about five or six records. But then since the Winter Olympics, they use it for a Lexus commercial with Billie Holiday singing. Wow. With the big Victrola on the front seat with the needle saying, smooth road, clear day, to show how smoothly the car went. And since then, uh, there's been about 60 different artists that have recorded it. It's catching fire now, after wow. 47 years. After, well, for those of you in the audience who don't know, I mean, uh, the more people who sing your song, the yeah. more... The narrow that comes write, in your way. Write, write a great song. They, you know, what do they say? But write the Chicago Cup song, Hey, Hey, oh. Holy Mackerel. And everybody says, You wrote that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, talking about writing a great song, let me switch over to Gene Chadler. Duke of Earl, Rainbow, some of your uh, writings, etc., are after 30 years still going uh, strong. Uh, Duke of Earl has been translated into commercials and into. Uh, I mean, it's still, rappers have been uh, trying to sample it and all that Correct. kind of stuff. Correct. So I mean that, uh, and I understand that that really was not the uh, the main song on the uh, single that was released. It was kind of like the B side originally, or am I mistaken? Well, it wasn't really the B side. It's uh -huh. just that it wasn't chosen by the company who had the first right or refusal for it. They chose another song called Night Owl from the group. Uh -huh. We had recorded all these songs in the same session. I was the lead singer for all of it. They uh, chose a song called Night Owl. Night Owl strolling down the street about the break of day. Oh, and, uh, I have your I, I, I say that because some people think of the other song that was called Night Owl. was Ooh, Night Owl. Oh, yeah. yeah you know, that was another one. You know something funny? I, I used to sing a song called Ooh, 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 ooh I'm a Night Owl. I wake up as soon as the sun goes down. Nobody ever heard as of that. As soon as the sound goes down. But that's okay. Worse. okay. <laughs> then uh -huh. I said, yeah, that's yeah. that. I haven't heard that one, but no, that's an oldie. <laughs> that's an oldie. And and you probably know a rap song called that. No, 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 that's right. <laughs> no, I don't uh, know a rap song called that. I understand. In any event, they chose uh, to um, go with the Night Owl song. That was another company who heard uh, the entire recording session. That was VJ Records at the time uh -huh. in Chicago, and they. Uh, asked who owned the other song, the Duke of Earl. 
And they said, no one. They said, well, can we have it? They said, well, the problem is it's the same guy is singing uh, both of the uh, songs. So we would either have to leave him with the group and you put somebody else over here with the uh, Duke of Earl record or vice versa. And in any event, uh, I always wanted to be a single, so I decided that I would go with the song that I wrote, which was the Duke of Earl, taking a chance, too, because the Night Owl song was already going up the charts. And uh, that was our first chart record, and I said, whoa, this one hasn't been released yet, but now we got a hit over here with the group. But I decided to go with the Duke. It was released uh, in uh, approximately end of October, 1st of November of 61, and the rest is history. That's for sure. Moment. Went right up to the top of the charts, that's for sure. That uh, uh, last, year, last week we were talking about completing the century and selecting uh, your favorite songs, and I must tell you that my selection, and it had nothing to do with the fact that you're going to be on, as far as a song that has so much force and makes you feel like you can, you can do anything you want to do, was Duke of Earl. I still don't understand what it means, but it gives you that feeling of, you know, I can succeed, and I, well, I love well, that. Well, I mean, if you listen to the lyrics, uh, just part of the lyrics where it says, nothing can stop me because that's I'm right. the Duke of Earl. That's right. And so that's why it gives you that feeling, is yeah. because there's a lot of faith, you believe in yourself, and nothing's going to stop you from achieving your goal. That's that right. Is. That's right. And believe me, nothing is going to stop these two young fellows uh, sitting alongside of me. Let's talk to um, Dakota. And uh, how did you get into impersonating Frank Sinatra? Was it something you just started doing for your family, Dakota? Well, it, it was something like that. Uh, my grandmother was probably one of Sinatra's biggest fans. And right before she passed away, she always used to play Frank Sinatra for me. And when she did pass away, she uh, left me in her well all her Frank Sinatra records because I liked it so much. And after about a year or so, I started singing with him. And I just, I just loved the way he sang. And I said, if this is a guy my grandmother likes so much, this is the guy I want to sing like. Boy, it's a good thing she had Sinatra, not Tiny Tim records or something <laughs> like that, right? <laughs> That's great. That's a great story. Well, Maestro, let's, uh, let's talk to you. Now, you were in my offices, you don't remember this, mm -hmm. about five years ago when you were three years old. Oh, God. So I have a feeling that uh, you have been destined for show business for a long time. Is that right? Yes, sir. I hear rumors that you and Dakota, can I talk about this? Uh, might, be, uh, might be trying to work something out together. Is that right? Yes, sir. Huh? What's it all about, guys? It was, uh, we're, we're trying to develop a, a new rat pack type show, uh -huh. but using children instead of the older guys that are doing And so you'd play Frank? Uh, supposedly. Yeah, I'd play Sammy Davis. And you'd play Sammy, and then you're going to you're gonna have uh, somebody young like you playing a drunk, a <laughs> Dean Martin? Is that... No? Well, uh, we, we're looking for somebody, uh, we're in the process of looking for somebody right now. Uh-huh. I'm not doing much lately. No? <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Uh -huh. He's laughing. Yeah, yeah, he's cute. And, uh, and so you're going to do a Dean or a Liza? We're, we're looking either for a Dean or a Liza right now. We uh, have somebody that wanted to do Liza, and we're going to be uh, the auditioning her, and we're trying to we'd be put a nationwide search out for a Dean. Well, that's great. If there's anyone here, well, you contact us. And incidentally, Bill McCormick in my office has got the perfect name for this group. He thinks you guys should call yourself the Brat Pack. <laughs> You like that? That's very good. No, I do not like the red pack. <laughs> you don't like the red pack? But I like the red pack. I like the red pack way better than the red. Oh, all right. Well, if you like but rats better. I'm not a rat. Okay. Well, we, that's why it's I'd funny. I'd rather say I'm a rat. That's why it's funny, because we well, know you're not well, a rat. Well, how about the small rat pack? That's, that's okay. Okay. A friend, of mine had a name for us, uh, uh, a friend of mine had a name for us, the, the mouse pack. The mouse pack. All right. Okay. Hey, well, in any event, I know as if these guys would be in it. We'd want to see it, that's for sure. Yeah. All right, let's get on. I wanted to ask, because these guys are at the beginning of the career, and you guys are at the top of your career, I wanted to ask um, uh, uh, Gene and, and Johnny, can you give them some advice, or what was the best advice that you had, or the worst mistake that you made, something that you might be able to impart to these fellas? from all your years of experience now that they're just starting out and look like they're going to be successful too. <laughs> the, I, they already are and I can, I can see them just zooming upwards. Yeah. Any um, advice? I don't want to switch what they're doing because they look like they're going at a good rate here. Uh, I don't think 
kids like to take advice from. Uh, oh, I know, uh, but I know. you know, really because. No. Well, well, I, but you'd be surprised. These kids are really yeah. well mannered, and yeah. they do listen. These are not. Well, uh, I'll tell you what. I never well, even told my musician friends. Go ahead. Because they'd say uh, they think I was a nerd. All right. Luckily, and my mother came from Venice, Italy, knew nothing about uh, what had happened. I wanted to be like all the great jazz musicians. Uh huh. And I went on the road with different bands, Jimmy Dorsey bandos, and my roommates were drug addicts. And luckily, luckily, thank God, uh, it never touched me to this day, and I might as well tell the TV, I, I, I've never told this to a TV audience, I've never in my life picked up a normal cigarette. And I tried to uh, even warn my young son, but he, he, he would only listen to his peers. He never smoked anything, ever. Never, never. Well, that's true. I, I understand that, you know, drugs can be like the, the worst possible, you know, things. And, and apparently when you're in this business, you're exposed to it a lot. Yeah, you want to be, uh, parents are at the bottom of the ladder when it, was, when it comes to what kids want to believe. They believe their peers more than their parents. Yeah. And that's the big crime. All right, and well, it's that's... the parents who know everything. Gene? Thank God my son now is doing magnificently. Good, good, good for him. Very good advice. Well, I, I, I would say that uh, one of the main things you should do in, in growing up as a youngster, because you, you're starting off much younger than I did uh, in the entertainment business, but the, one of the main things is to keep your head screwed on in terms of education. Uh -huh. You want to keep educating yourself. Uh, you want to keep a level head. And remember that uh, fame is fleeting, and it can come and it can go. Uh, but that education can carry on and take you into other things that you can continue your life and also keep your head on tight so if something happens and disappointment comes in the entertainment business you don't blow your mind because of it because I mean you know you don't know what's uh, destined for you in life this may be it or it may not be it sometime it happens when you're young and then as you get older they shy away from you because you're not that young, cute kid anymore that they seen then. And then some entertainers start off young and their career continues on uh -huh. as adults. But I'm just saying be prepared for it by keeping your head on level and realizing that this is a fleeting business. You can be popular today and not popular tomorrow. And I've seen a lot of uh, entertainers become very depressed because the success is not there that was there before exactly. and they take themselves off into other things where if they kept the level head they could continue on in something else in life so always keep your head on level get that education and remember this is fleeting and if it happened to last for you i'll be the first one sitting in front of the tv watching for you yeah. right. great advice <laughs> what, yeah. what gene is said is exactly right because we've seen on tv all those young performers who who uh, j just fell by the wayside and their has-beens and their lives are all screwed up. And then you had a smart little girl like Jodie Foster, uh -huh. who right at the height of her career, decided to go to college uh -huh. and study. Mm -hmm. And now she's a, a brilliant woman, and uh -huh. she's still a, a fine act, a great actress. You know, they had a TV show uh, one time uh, ago for a lot of these family TV shows used to be on, like the, the Aussies and yeah. what have you. And they showed a lot of the youngsters whose careers were finished after the young part and they went off into drugs, they went off into this, I've they seen. were depressed and they talked about alcohol and all other things they did. They just didn't understand why they couldn't continue on. Yeah. You know. Yeah, there are peaks and valleys in this business and if you can't get used to rejection, it's a, the wrong business for you because rejection is nine out of ten times. And what you're doing now, I'm sure that you don't have access to all of your monies, but I'm sure your parents are looking out to make sure that they set up some nice investments for your money. So when that does happen, you're set up for other things later on when you become old enough to handle things. So therefore, you can say, okay, if you don't want me no more, you know, I, I've got my education, I wanna do this, I got the money to go set it up, I'm going to do it, and I'm gone. So watch your monies, oh. get a good lawyer like Jay <laughs> Ross. <and Right. laughs> well, let me say this, I know both uh, of the families involved with these two young men and they're both very lucky right. because they have people who really care set right. a tremendous example right. and are 100 percent behind them and that is not always the case and i'm sure they do but yeah, as you so. asked the question those are the things i know to put yeah. out there because i've seen so many people fail in that area and you know some of the youngsters today you read in the paper where there's problems between the parents of that young kid who was successful 
like the guy who did the thing about being home alone. Uh -huh. There were so many oh, yeah. problems. You, everybody's got to keep uh, their head is, on tight and make sure everything goes smooth. It's because been it's all about years. these two guys here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just realized uh, talking that I bought not this violin but the one before this from your great uncle or something, yeah. Horvath. I knew all those families. I used to go to their houses and play violin with all. They all played violin and guitars. Man, they were swinging players. Yeah. Tell, all, tell all your family I said hello, will you? All right. Uh, if it, <laughs> well, what can I say? All right. We still have some time here. I just uh, I'm having a I'm having more fun doing this than you you people in the uh, viewing audience are having watching because this is really great. I wanted to ask. Uh, I think we, we, got, we probably know the answer from Dakota to this question, and the question is, who was your biggest influence in music? Probably, am I, would I be right yeah, in saying yeah, Frank Sinatra? Probably. Yeah, okay. But what about uh, the other three people on the panel? Who was your biggest influence? Well, I'd have to say because of uh, the improvisation that I do originally was Joe Venuti, because he was the only violinist that I really listened to Stuff Smith a little bit. Eddie South, a lot of people don't remember Eddie South. It's called the Dark Angel of the Violin. Used to play at the airliner at, at uh, State and Division, which has been defunct for years and years and years. But I used to go in the back room and play with him. Those were my first influences on violin playing. OK, Gene? My influences. Uh Early in my career, there were several people. Early in my career, when I was in high school, it was a group called the Spaniels in Pookie Hudson. I used to try to mimic him uh, in, the, in the hallways of the school. Good night, Should sweetheart, been, yeah. it's time to go, yeah. <laughs> and then later on, it became Brooke Benton. Uh -huh. And then uh, lasting, and that stabilized everything, were people like uh, Ray Charles, Nat King Cole, and in the female area, uh, Aretha Franklin and Gladys Knight. Wow, there's yeah. quite, a, quite, a, quite, a, quite a list. What about you, Maestro? Well, Who is it that you uh, feel that uh, is going to be your influence in music? We're not talking about acting now. We might ask you about acting, say, too. Uh, Michael Jackson, Prince, James Brown, Stevie Wonder, and Ray Charles. And this must be it. Some pretty big names there, too, yeah. yeah. All right, well, we're going to ask one question, too. Uh, you know, we've been uh, hearing all, seeing all these magazines. They're all talking about the greatest movie of the century, the greatest singer of the century, the greatest song, etc. What would, you know, from, from, the, from the mouths of someone who's 8 and 12, etc., in your opinion, okay, what's either your favorite or, in your opinion, the greatest song that you know of? Well, uh, in I, it's a pretty hard question. Oh, you can, you can mention one or two if you want. The answer... You know, uh, we're not going to hold you to it. There was a song written by, uh, by, by Mr. Frank Sinatra called I'm a Fool to Want You, who he wrote for uh, Ava Gardner at the time. After I'm a fool to want you. That's the tone. See? He knows You're it. not messing right. with kids, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I thought it was, I thought it was a, a great orchestration, and it, it was a great song, and... Uh, had very, very good lyrics to it. So that's one of your favorites, Probably. all right? Well, see, now you're recommending to our viewers to check that out. What about you, Maestro? What would you tell the people uh, to check out as far as the song? Or you want some time to think? Uh, let's see. I would say Science in the Moon by uh, Stevie Wonder. Stevie Science, Wonder? Science in the Moon. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah right. That, okay. And I would say. Surprisingly, instead of having songs from the last five, ten years, you guys have picked songs probably from before you were born, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. Now, we've got to eliminate, when we ask the question to Gene and to Johnny, we've got to eliminate your own signature song. So other than your own song, what would you say is one of the major songs of, the, of your era, of the century, etc.? Well, to be honest with you, I couldn't possibly do that. You that, can't do it. It's too uh, much. Throughout the years, there's been so many great songs uh -huh. that you pick one for this, one for this. Uh, oh, you can group, mention several. I know a group that did one. Then there was a single artist like Ray, Nat King Cole. God, when you just heard all those songs, there's so many great ones. I, it's very you, different. You've been asked that a thousand <laughs> times, and so have I, and we can't come up with an yeah, answer. Because we there's so many great ones. Yeah. Like, it's like in food. What's What tastes better? A big T-bone steak 
or a, or a nice porterhouse steak or a chocolate sundae. All right, we got chocolate one. Chocolate sundae. See, I mean, no, he this, knows. He's got it. At the point, it's it's different. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's apples yeah. and oranges. That's a very difficult. All right. Well, okay. Then let's do with this because we got a we got a young actor here in the group. What about movies? What movie, if any, had a big influence upon you? I can tell you, you which movie had a real big influence on me. And if it were to be reviewed, it would probably get two and a half stars. And that's um, the human comedy. Saroyan. Saroyan. Uh, because all it was was about 12 different vignettes of life. Uh -huh. And I remember going through every one of those. I remember the real mean guy that everybody in the neighborhood hated. Don't go in his yard. Oh, he's really mean. And in this picture, it shows this wonderful old guy sitting in there. He says, there they come to the old apple tree to steal apples. Uh -huh. Oh, look at them. And look at that young one. Is he, is he, and it's, well, I guess it's time for me to come out and, and chase them now, you know. And it was a whole, <laughs> so he was and just I, and doing, it was playing a, beautiful, a role. And a beautiful old man that loved kids. But we saw it the other way. So it was all these different vignettes in this movie that I fell in love with. And uh, I'll never forget that. Well, that's great. That's very really animated. Uh, anybody else want to pop up with one? Go ahead. I, uh, I would, well, there's, there's several. All right. I thought was Pick one or two. It was great. I thought the, the one that really influenced me never to do any drugs or anything was uh, the man with the golden arm. Oh, naturally. That and, was a great, uh, great Sinatra vehicle. And I'd say that probably the greatest gangster movie of all time was The Godfather. And, oh. Uh, I thought Marlon Brando, I thought that was his best role. Did you ever see Little Caesar or Public Enemy? I, I seen Public Enemy. Did you? Uh, all right, good. Uh, all right, Maestro. Um, Rush Hour. Two great Rush Hour. Okay, so we're getting a little bit of a newer movie there. <laughs> that was your big one, huh? That's my favorite, and um, I'll say Buddy. That's my second. All right. Well, we had uh, we had the show on live last week, and the the uh, one of the viewers called in with The Goonies as his most important movie of the. Uh, Thing. So these are certainly a lot better than that, I think. <laughs> well, and Jeannie, you want to add with you that, know, or too many, a, too? It's I know. the same thing. You're allowed I, to cop I, on I, this I if you I can tell you some movies that uh, affected me more than others when I left the theater. Uh-huh. Uh, that was The Birds. Oh, yeah. When, when I first saw that and I walked out of the theater, I was looking for birds. <laughs> yeah. You want to know something? And the other one was... was uh, uh, the Exorcist. Oh yeah, yeah. So you, that, little, you like those scary that, ones. That they, right? me. well, it affected me more. Sure. It the, was new, different, and I'd seen birds all my life, but I never thought about them coming down. Anytime a bird flew near, I said, "Whoa, hey!" <laughs> <laughs> at the, at the uh, golf course on Wayland Avenue, on a par three hole, I'm going to the, the uh, toward the green, and boom, a, a bird came down and made my head bleed because they thought I was going to. Mess with the nest that a happened nest, to be in yeah. one of the trees. Oh. So that oh. reminded me of that. We got a special <laughs> ah. treat. We're going to probably come back to it, but I wanted to get this in because I have four singers here. I may not be a singer myself, but I certainly know how to appreciate it. And so as a treat to our Chicago viewers, because this scene in Chicago access, Jenny. we're going to uh, end the show. We may have a few minutes afterwards to ask a thing, but I wanted to get this in. We're going to get all four of them at, to uh, do a version of Chicago for you. What okay. do you think of that? This Can is I, totally impromptu. <laughs> no, there's no union scale on this. This is totally for you, our viewing audience. May I tune up? Right? I tune sure, up tune up, of course. Very good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. All okay. right. Now cut that out. All right. Here we go. Chicago, Chicago, that's in the town. Chicago, Chicago, I'll show you around. I love it, that's in the town. Okay, all right. 
that hope, was impromptu. I hope that doesn't destroy you guys' careers right now. No, no, no. As a matter of okay. fact, I would think it would make it bigger. Yeah. Well, we know where we stand as far as Chicago. I wanted to get that in, you know, before uh, to kind of get, get us to the thing. So, look, thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoy the show, and thanks to my guests tonight. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Jay. Thank you.